Hi there, I am Anmol and I welcome you all to my YouTube channel. So today we would be discussing on a topic suggested by one of the viewers. We would be talking about how to treat Excel macros and how to actually invoke them using parameters and without parameters. So let's get started. So first thing first, what is an Excel macro? So an Excel macro is an action or a set of action that you can record, give a name, save, and run as many times as you want and whenever you want. So it actually helps you to save a lot of time on repetitive tasks, which are involved in data manipulation and data reports that are required to be done frequently. In layman term, if there is any work that you want to keep on repeating and it's a bit complex, you kind of record or create a macro for it, which is a VBA code. And then you can keep executing the code over and over again to perform all those tasks. So suppose if your task includes 20 steps, which actually does data manipulation. So suppose your task has 20 steps, okay, which does a complex data manipulation, coloring, filtration, and all of that. So with recording macro, and you actually have to execute the 20 steps five times a week, which is from Monday to Friday, which actually accounts to then you performing 100 steps. So instead of that, what you will do, you will record a macro, okay? And now for all those 100 steps, every time you'll just have to come and click on run macro, which is now you only have to perform one click, which means now that 100 steps has been considerably reduced to just five steps, which is nothing but you just clicking on run macro. So that is an advantage of macros. So macro actually automate your common and repetitive keystrokes or any click that you use in Excel to create and edit spreadsheets. So now by reducing the number of steps you're required to perform all those common commands, macro actually help to speed up your production and reduce the time you have to spend staring at an electronic spreadsheet each day. So it is actually, uh, automation on Excel level that gives you an advantage of skipping all those steps and just performing a simple click for you to get your job done. Now let's see how do we invoke or how do we create a macro using Excel and then invoking them using UiPath and even without using UiPath. So this is my Excel in which we would be kind of creating a macro and then invoking it with or without UiPath. So suppose you got an Excel and your job is kind of to, you know, sum up the BE customer IDs and then highlight it with a certain color. So that still involves, you know, you writing a formula. Then, so first I'll write a sum formula. Uh, here we go. So it calculated the formula, then me clicking on home screen and then selecting the color, okay? And then say I'm copying it and then I'm going on to some other sheet and pasting it, something like this, or I'm copying it and pasting it here. So this is my task, okay. Now, instead of me performing this entire task daily, what I can do is I can record a macro for the same, okay. Suppose I also have one more sheet, okay. Now I'll go on recording the macro. And for that, what I'll be doing is, that I'll have to go to developers panel. Now by default, maybe this developer panel is not available on your Excel. So you'll have to enable it. You can go to files, you can go to options, then you can go to advanced settings. No, you can go to customize ribbon and you'll have to select this, this developer thing. If it's unchecked, just check it and click on okay. Then you'll be able to view this developer option here. You'll click on record macro. And once you click on record macro, you'll have to just perform the exact same steps that you just performed. So you'll click on record macro, you'll name it something. Say you name it sum of ID. Okay, and now my macro is running. So I'll write is equal to sum. I'll write the same formula. Okay, and it is on H2 to H10. Okay, so I've got this thing here. And I'll go to home, I'll color it with green, then I'll copy it, I'll go to sheet one and I'll paste it here. Okay. And uh, what I'll say, I just want the values. Okay, so I want, got the values. I'll go back to developer and I'll click on stop recording. 
So now my macro is ready. Okay, what I'll be doing is I'll just simply delete all of this and we'll now run it using a macro. Okay, so I've deleted this. I go to sheet and I'll delete this as well. If I go to developers, if I go to view code, I'll go to modules. So here is my macro sum of ID. Okay, now if I click on run, that I want to run this particular macro. Okay, so if we go back and see, our macro has already been executed. So the amount of time we took to do this particular job, going copying and going to another sheet, pasting it has been done by macro itself in like blink of an eye. Okay, so this is the advantage of a macro. Now, if we want to do the same thing using UiPath, so that is also pretty easy. I'll delete all of this and you can see it's all gone. I'll save it. I'll go back to here. I'll open an Excel application score because I have to deal with a macro enabled file. I'll navigate to the location of my file, which is sample report. Okay, now I have to execute a macro. So I'll pick up the activity execute macro. Okay, so I've picked up this activity. I'll just check what's the name of my macro. It is sum of ID, so I'll copy it. I'll close both these files and I'll go and copy sum of ID. That's it. Once I give this thing a run, so the task that we perform would also be performed with the help of macros. So it has opened and it has even executed everything. So if you go back and you open your sample report, you will see you've got this thing here, whereas you even have got this thing here highlighted. Now, if we go back to view code, how does this whole macro thing actually works? Okay, so it's pretty easy that you create your, this thing sub, which means you're creating a module. Okay, and you can name it anything. Okay, so suppose you've named it sub macro one, and then you need to include a parenthesis. Okay, and you say message box, and then you say in macro one. Okay, then you again have another macro which says sub macro two, and sub macro two actually says message box from macro two. Okay. So you say hi from macro two. Now what you can do, you can even call this thing here. Okay, and for that, what you can do, you can either write call macro two, okay? Or you can even skip writing call. So call is optional. So you can either write it or you can even skip it. Okay, so if you write, it's gonna call. And if you do not write, it's still gonna call. So both will kind of work, okay? So now if I click on run, so it says in macro one, and now it's gonna call macro two and it will say hi from macro two. Okay. And if you simply run this thing, hi from macro two or just macro two, so it will say hi from macro two. Okay. Now, similarly, you can also pass parameters. Now say that this particular thing, macro two actually expects a parameter my number which is an integer value, okay. So what I can do is, now when I'm calling call macro two and I have to pass a parameter, I'll put a parenthesis and I'll say 30, okay. Now what will happen now that I've passed a parameter, I'll have to make sure that this parameter, like if I want to actually display this particular parameter, so I can do that here, high from macro two, okay. And I'll put an ampersand, and then I'll put my number. So it will say hi from macro two and the number that I've passed here would now be printed here and it will say 30. Okay, so suppose I'm just running macro one, I run it, it says in macro one, hi from macro two 30. So this 30 is actually being passed from some other workflow, which is from macro one. Okay, now similarly say, suppose if we have got something similar to do, Say, suppose we have this adult count here. Okay. Now what are macros supposed to do? Let's go and record one macro. Okay. So let's name it macro seven. So what our macro would do, it would sum up V2 
to V10. Okay, and it will give us nine. Okay, we'll record a macro here. Stop the recording of the macro here. Now, if we go back here and we see macro seven here, what we'll do, we'll pass a parameter to this particular macro and we'll see that it sums up the value that we have passed to this particular value, which means now we are invoking macro from UI path by passing a parameter as well. Okay, so this is a macro seven and we'll make this macro seven accept a number as integer, okay? So we said, okay, my number is integer. We have passed that to this particular macro. Now that we've passed this my number as integer to this particular macro, so we would actually be providing an external parameter to it from UiPath Studio. And so suppose what we wanted to do is, that whatever we are passing from an external, like an external parameter, we wanted it to be get added to this particular sum that we've calculated. Okay. So for that, what we can do is that we know that our sum is residing at position V12. So we can even have a message box. So we can say, okay, message box. And where is our sum residing? We know it is residing at V11. Okay. So we'll say V11 dot value. That's where our value is. This is giving an error because it does not have an enclosed parenthesis, which is okay, we'll provide that. Okay, and now to this particular thing, we're gonna add a number. Okay, and we'll close this entire thing in two braces. One other thing what we can do is that we can give dim sum as integer. Okay, and we can include this thing in sum, save this value in a sum variable. And then we can display this thing as message box. The sum is equal to and then ampersand and then we say, okay, sum. And this has to be enclosed in a parenthesis like this. Okay, so one other way is this. Now we will call this thing from our UiPath Studio. Okay, so let's go and do that. So we have, okay, yeah. So we'll save this thing. We'll go back to the studio. And over here, what is our macro name now? The macro name is macro seven. So we're gonna copy the name. We'll go back here and we'll say it is macro seven. And now that we have to pass an integer parameter to it, so over here, we can pass an integer value, say we passed 30. Okay, so we close it. Now we know what it should do. It should actually calculate the sum and to that sum, it should add 30. Okay, so here it will have the sum and to this particular sum, it's gonna add 30 and then print the value for us. Okay, so we'll delete this thing so that it gets calculated again. And now we'll close this particular Excel or we can even leave it open. And now let's just go and then debug this file. So what it would do, it would actually calculate the sum that is nine. Okay, so it has printed the sum that is nine and it has said that the sum is 39. So that is how we invoked an Excel by pass, invoked a macro by passing parameters to it. So we saw both the things that how we can actually invoke a macro without any parameters with or without UI path. And then we saw how do we invoke a macro by passing it a parameter with or without UI path. So similarly, using this record macro activity, you can actually perform a lot of complex calculations and manipulations using Excel macros. And for that, you need not to know the VBA code because once you record it, the VBA code gets written by itself. That's one added advantage. So I hope you would be able to use macros in all your future upcoming projects very easily. I hope you found this video useful. And if you did, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel. Also, you can even suggest me topics that you want me to cover and I'll surely do that in the next video. Till then, stay tuned and happy learning.